Very interesting. Call to order of a work session at Goodyear City Council, Monday, April 28, 2008. All items listed are for discussion only. No action can or will be taken. Uh, we have one council member uh, who won't be with us this evening, and uh, we'll uh, ask for her excusal at the meeting at 6. <laughs> We have two items at this work session. One is to receive a briefing on the details in the uh, integrated water master plan, and the other is the budget. So, Sean, you're up first. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Tonight, uh, we're going to present to you a draft copy of the integrated water master plan, discuss that with you. I'm just going to give a few slides in the opener, and then I'm going to turn it over to our consultant, Steve Davis from Black and Beach. He'll get into the plan in its, its entirety and kind of walk you through what we, what we try to accomplish. Uh, the initial goal was to develop an integrated water master plan, both infrastructure and resource. It's actually the first time the city of Goodyear has had a fully integrated plan that looks at both water, wastewater, and reclaimed. So it's a, a very, very comprehensive, and we're going to use that to project growth and, and to be able to meet that growth demand in an efficient and sustainable manner. Uh, some of the approaches that we took uh, to accomplish this is we needed to look at our municipal plans and our planning area and interpret that and project that as a demand. So the first thing we did was uh, we developed revised water and wastewater unit rates. We looked at each type of growth, single family, residential, multifamily, the different types of commercial, industrial, governmental um, growth that the city will see and we calculated what those demands will be what, either on a unit basis or a per, per square foot depending on what type of growth, uh, what type of uh, development occurs. We looked at um, the utility billing in the city of Goodyear for actual data. Uh, we looked at other communities in the valley, what do they do? So we have a very, very tight and concise master plan and unit rate, excuse me, uh, that we can use to project demands moving forward. We're only at 8% roughly 8 to 10 percent built out on the utility side of things. So going in at this early of a juncture and coming up with very tight and concise unit uh, rates will help us not oversize our infrastructure. It's very, very expensive, so we want to make sure that we size things correctly and that we're able to time things from a growth standpoint so that we're able to have the infrastructure in place in advance of that growth. Uh, we wanted to look at the, and, and develop and recommend different types of infrastructure. We wanted to look at long-term planning for transmission lines, uh, distribution lines in the water side, looked at different sizes for our water reclamation facilities. We've actually, when we get into the plan in a little while with Steve, we're actually going to site additional wastewater treatment plants. Our original goal and our original thoughts have changed a bit. We've looked at drainage basins and, and how to efficiently operate our wastewater systems and we've actually come up with an extra cup. What we'll need ultimately is smaller facilities. We were going to go with several large facilities. We're going to go with smaller facilities now down in, in, in the southern planning area. And then the biggest thing we needed to do is when we, once we have the prepared master plan is to look at phasing and cost. The, the plan and the planning has been going on now for 18 months, 20 months. So when we started out and, and the plan is based off of a growth rate, 16 percent growth rate. Well, we're currently not experiencing that level of growth. What the plan allows us to do is accelerate or decelerate the amount of infrastructure we need to bring on to meet that demand. So it's, I use the analogy, it's like an accordion. We can stretch it or compress it very, very easily now. And we can rerun these models and we can rerun these plans on an annual basis or as needed uh, to develop our, our next rounds of CIP, our 10-year projections. We can look at, you know, as it relates to all sorts of infrastructure. So it's going to be a nice tool to have. I uh, wish we had it a few years ago, but uh, we've got it now, and we're planning on keeping it up to date. Uh, just to give you a little bit of progress to date, um, it was very important that we engage the development community early in the process. We wanted to work with them, make sure that they're not planning density changes, whether increasing or decreasing their densities, and we're basing infrastructure off of old information. Uh, we needed to get their, their input, their feedback on our water strategies, on our wastewater strategies, plant siting, the development communities obviously needs to be with us hand in hand on water, wastewater infrastructure. And we felt it was very important that we engage them proactively. And we don't develop a plan and then hand them the plan and say, we will develop infrastructure based off of this. Make it a collaborative effort. So we did that. We had multiple 
group meetings. We had several meetings with large plan developers to talk about the master plan. And what we tried to stress to the development community, and it's important for the mayor and council to understand, is that a master plan of this nature is a planning document. It's not a design. We haven't designed the wastewater treatment plant. We've, we've identified where they should be and what size they should be. We haven't, we haven't designed pipelines. We've identified corridors, how to move water efficiently north to south, east to west. And then when we actually get into build infrastructure necessary to suit development, that's when you'll go in and really hone in the plan and, the, and, and tighten things up. But from a master planning standpoint, this is essentially a blueprint, strategies, philosophies. Um, and then the, the plan has now been completed. We've integrated their comments. We didn't always agree with everything that they said. And what we did, we would integrate that into the plan. But it was important that we ask the question. Uh, just to give you an update on the next few steps is, you know, we're here tonight to discuss the plan with you. Uh, we're going to finish this final report. It's in draft format right now. And then our plan is to bring it back for final adoption to the council for mid-May, so two or three weeks from now. We'd like to bring that back and, and have that adopted as our master plan. Just to, um, I'm just going to do two or three more slides here and then turn it over. But our planning area, um, we, this is the city of Goodyear's planning area today. Uh, the area in Sonoran Valley uh, South was incorporated into a standalone plan that we're working with the developer on. What we did is we, we planned everything from essentially I-10 through to that small section of state land that we recently annexed. So those are our planning areas. We call them water planning areas one, two, three, four, and five. So from top to bottom, that's where, that's where we are. Um, what we did is we, we incorporated things into our municipal planning area based off of our existing land mass. But then as we started to go, we realized that there were several projects that were ongoing or underway. We wanted to incorporate their demands into the process. So we looked at some of the development down in Sonoran Highlands, McRae Holding, some of the properties on that um, western side of the city uh, outside of planning area four. We wanted to get an idea of what they would bring to the table as it relates to water and sewer demand so that it was fully integrated. And then this is, it's a, it's, the map isn't really, you don't really need to dig in to, to take a look at it, but what that is is that's our current land use plan and the different types of uh, densities and the dip different types of zoning. What we've done is we've incorporated all of those zonings and all of those the zones and the land uses into this plan. And if you were to develop, fully develop the city based off of its current and planned land uses, we've added in city center, we've added in baseball, things of that nature. But all the currently planned land uses, we're looking at uh, about 40,900 acres of non-residential land uses and approximately 188,000 dwelling units. And that doesn't mean that we're going to ever reach that level. Densities could change, philosophies could change, uh, the, the demand of growth will definitely change that number. But from a planning standpoint, if you use that number today and project it forward and take, take the average of dwelling units, if you have two to four units per acre, we put in three units. So if you, if you look at it from a very high level, that's the size and the order of magnitude that we're looking at as a city. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Davis. He's going to get into water demands and flow projections and then get into the methodologies that we used. Feel free to ask any questions as we go along. And if Steve can't answer it, I can jump back up and, and try to assist. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and, and Council, I'm very pleased to be here tonight. As Sean said, we've been working with the city for a while, and I'm happy and hopeful that uh, we have a product that he can move on through and adopt and put to work for the city. Um, I'll go fairly quick. There's an there's awful lot of information, and I'd rather go through in very brief form and leave time for uh, answering your questions. Should you have any, that's probably the more valuable use of my time here in front of you today. So um, as uh, the slide just prior to this one, as Sean had mentioned, is just simply uh, our starting point where we take a city's land use plan and then we interpret it. We, we, we find out how much water does it take to allow you to build out your plan and then how much infrastructure of each size will it take to... Uh, to move that water around. So the land use plan was our starting point and we faithfully followed it with a few uh, specific uh, revisions that uh, we, we clearly noted and, 
and uh, implement it in there. When we uh, interpreted that, utilizing the uh, accurately analyzed unit rates that, uh, that um, we got from analyzing your own data, it gave us uh, that the, the huge amount of growth yet to come in water demand, more than tenfold increase in water, uh, wastewater flow, and reclaimed water use. And that's where in the infrastructure <coughs> design or planning work that we did lies to, uh, to take you from 7 million gallons today to 92 million gallons at build out. It's uh, so a lot more work yet ahead. When we looked at those um, unit rates, just for your information, we found that the city today is currently uh, doing better than what the Arizona Department of Water Resources has as a goal for you folks in terms of gallons per capita day, uh, in terms of per dwelling unit. You're running about a little under 200 gallons per person per day. That's the overall share of what they would use at home and what's being used by businesses out in the community. ADWR's uh, goal for Goodyear is about 250 gallons per capita a day. So we're already using a number that's it's a good number. We projected on out, got these rates or totals at build out. When we uh, compare that to uh, uh, the demand to the amount of water you have available to get the job done, you can see that uh, in the base year, Today, uh, demand pales in comparison to the amount of uh, supply available, and most of that supply is uh, groundwater. Most of that um, uh, available, uh, that pink color there is uh, a lot of groundwater that you're not yet pumping uh, even a, a fraction of what it is. When we move forward to the system being completely built out, uh, demand comes, uh, total demand comes very close to the available resources. The uh, little bit of, uh, of unused reclaimed water at build out will be uh, vitally needed for recharge to help offset the groundwater pumping. But, um, and uh, the potable water, you can see we also are accounting for brine in there. And it's very important to note that uh, because of the uh, brackish character of a lot of the groundwater under Goodyear, that there will be a fair amount of uh, reject brine that uh, we need to account for that in the quantities of water that we uh, pull out of the ground. <coughs> Most of the resources that are going to uh, meet demand at build out, the vast majority of it comes from the Gila River northward. The uh, West Salt River Valley, the large aquifer that uh, uh, underlies all of Phoenix. Uh, you'll be getting um, a significant portion of your groundwater from there. Plus, coming in from further north outside of the city boundaries will be your Central Arizona Project Supply, uh, water delivered by agreement from the Adam and Mutual Water Company and from uh, Litchfield Park Service Company. Yet, most of the demand will lie at build out. The vast majority of the demand will be south of the Gila River. So. The infrastructure we designed here included the uh, transmission system to move bulk quantities of water from where the sources are to, uh, to where the demands are. When it's all done, you end up with a, uh, a water infrastructure map that uh, we usually like to print them out large. Uh, because there's a lot of information on there, but you get the condensed version on your screen today. And that is the entire transmission system, that's every reservoir, pumping station, treatment plant uh, that will take the city through build-out. The good thing about creating a build-out plan today is that each area as it develops, they now know where their reservoir will be, where the booster pumps will be, uh, the water's bringing coming through pipes coming from this direction to that direction. It's all understood so that piece by piece, ooh, uh, oh, there we go, switch the screen. Um, as it gets built, um, 
everyone efficiently installs one element at a time. There's no gaps, there's no double building, and, uh, but that's um, the final product there in one of its forms. Sir, what yes. does the darkened area in the Lipsco area indicate? Uh, yes, that's just, it's, uh, Lipsco is shown as a gray color like that because uh, it's not in your water service area. Okay. Right, so that's just, um, the green area right below that is, is um, pressure zone one, followed by the, you know, the various pressure zones through the water system, and uh, Litchfield Park is simply um, not in the, we did not plan any infrastructure for Litchfield Park Service Company. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. We then, uh, let's see, I've got to back up one. On the um, wastewater system, same picture, completed wastewater infrastructure. And um, I would say, uh, again, it's a plan that has the entire collection system, pumping stations where required, and the uh, treatment plant locations all laid out and uh, several key features of this system having a blank slate a clean blackboard to work with for the vast area to the south we were able to design a system that will very efficiently work by gravity driven flow uh, avoiding pumping avoiding the cost of those stations the energy to run those stations we are able to lay a system in that um, pretty efficiently followed along the um, uh, the Waterman Wash and let gravity do the job. We've identified uh, satellite plants that will simply be uh, sources of producing reclaimed water versus which plants will also have to uh, provide for biosolids processing, residual processing. And um, again, it provides developers and the city with a picture of uh, of where the wastewater will be conveyed to where the plants will be and phase by phase, increment by increment, this system can be built and knits together into a efficient system. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Now, I understand, you know, there are some lift stations south in the, in the southern area and they'll stay there, but you're saying that you don't have to build any more. Um, that is correct. There's uh, going to be maybe one more in the in the very uh, western, northwestern corner of the southern area, right up towards the Gila River. But uh, by and large, everything um, from what is the current uh, area where Stray Mountain Ranch development is taking place today, southward, uh, every line on there is, is gravity driven. And um, it's always the goal. And usually, uh, like I said, given a clean slate, um, and given the fact that there were no mountains standing up in the middle of that, uh, along that water course, uh, if, if it can flow down the waterman wash by gravity, we can make it flow in that same direction by gravity too. So that was our goal and it, it worked well. And we may be able to, we even eliminated, I believe, a f one or two lift stations over the, uh, as we headed towards final design. Th that are that you thought you were going to have to have? Well, that we're actually up uh, north of the Gila River that are in the current flow path to the um, uh, 157th Avenue wastewater treatment plant. <coughs> when we look towards the, uh, the reclaimed water system, One of our first questions was, is what should we do with um, about 43, 44 million gallons per day of reclaimed water? If uh, you think back to that first slide where we projected water at build out, the city will be sending out about 92 million gallons a day of, of potable water out to the residences and businesses throughout the city. About half of that comes back as wastewater, about 43 million gallons per day. That gets reclaimed, and then what do we do with 43 million gallons of, of highly purified reclaimed water? We can reuse it, golf courses, lake filling, 
Uh, we can recharge it into the ground, providing credits that support groundwater pumping, or we can do a little bit of both. So we analyzed uh, uh, what would be in the city's best interest, keeping in mind that 100% is in essence reused no matter which type of system we build. This is an integrated, in you could almost say closed loop system. Every drop of that reclaimed water will be beneficially reused. Our question is, is what's the most efficient way to do that? So what we looked at is a system that was maybe zero reuse, 100% uh, recharge, and we looked at a mid-level system where maybe about half of it's reused, half of it's recharged, and then we looked at the other extreme end where we try to reuse every bit of it possible, um, maybe even uh, providing dual plumbing throughout residential neighborhoods and providing a tap for reclaimed water at the domestic level that they can use for their outdoor landscaping. What we found is, what we've found pretty much every time we've done this, is that really the mid-level is the most efficient. We're talking cost here, we're not talking optimizing resources because we'll use 100% either way. And um, it just turns out when you push either one of those, push towards either one of those extremes, the potable water either gets extremely expensive and the savings on the reclaim doesn't drop that much, or if you go to the other extreme, the reclaimed infrastructure gets incredibly expensive and the potable water doesn't drop as much. And so the sweet spot is really in the middle, um, which means that uh, we'll serve the big ticket um, reuse markets, uh, parks and schools, the big turf areas, uh, golf courses, large lake filling, all the things that are being pretty commonly done today with reclaimed water should keep being done, but we don't need to push for every last little obscure market because it's going to cost the city and its citizens more. The water still has tremendous value if we can get it into the ground. Can I ask a question on some of the agricultural water that is in these shallow wells? Uh, for instance, there are some south and there are some in the uh, uh, to be soon to be a, a um, the Ullman development. Uh, King, mm -hmm. Ranch. King Ranch. King Ranch. Mm -hmm. Within that, those are shallow wells that the water is really useless for anything except irrigation. Will that? Will there be a? We will be. Able, will we be able to utilize that water? Yes. Yes. I'm gonna just excellent question. Um, you you must have previewed my f next slide. We've got a. Uh, it's 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 a. It's absolutely fundamental issue for the city as they move forward. Um, we noted that there is a huge amount of groundwater under the city and that we're going to use almost every drop of it by the time we get to build out. And that, when they ran the model, when uh, the city had another consultant uh, do hydrogeologic groundwater modeling, that model was pulling every bit of that water as they uh, pumped over the next hundred years from King Ranch, from down south in the Waterman Basin, from down in the Sonoran Valley and what we know about that water and it's not that much different than what's happening around the Phoenix Valley around Maricopa County is that it's brackish and getting more so. Um, a lot of it is a legacy of, uh, of agriculture for many years and so um, much of it has already uh, arri arrived at the state that um, you can't uh, uh, bring in overseeding for a golf course in the fall with it, that you might be able to grow certain crops with it, but uh, more sensitive crops, more sensitive landscaping will die with uh, the salt levels that are already in a lot of uh, the water underlying Goodyear. But if you think back to the, 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 the way we're going to do this as an integrated plan, we'll pull it out, we'll treat it to um, uh, potable standards, and uh, and then it comes back as wastewater, it gets reclaimed. If we treat it to potable standards, 500 to 600 parts per million, 700, it picks up about 100 when it goes through household use. It comes back at as six to 700 parts water. We reclaim it, and now when we send it out for irrigation, it's a uh, A-plus quality water. 
And when we recharge it back into the ground, it's going back into the ground as a high quality A plus water. Going back into the ground and or being used for irrigation as much better quality than what was pumped out of the ground. The key thing that we show on this slide is though, the salt has to stay out. It's taken many years for all that salt to be put in and over a long or not so long course of time it can be taken back out again and we've got this integrated system we'll be recharging, we'll be reusing water. Um, if you put that salt back in it will become, it will render the reclaimed water useless. It will become a waste stream unto itself at some point. The um, process that you just described, what is the cost factor involved in it? In keeping the uh, salt... The you just described. Okay. Well, mo much of the city's future groundwater will be treated with um, reverse osmosis. Uh, reverse osmosis is uh, is a little bit more costly than typical surface water treatment plants that uh, that are treating, say, Central Arizona Project water or Salt River Project water. So yes, it is a little bit more expensive. Does that mean that you're going to have to have uh, individual uh, units in residence? No, 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 no. These will be done at um, at the, the city will operate about three about uh, three reverse osmosis plants. Larger, they'll be larger rather than putting them at each wellhead. They'll be in centralized locations so you can get economies of scale. These plants will need to be, you know, overseen by qualified staff and you don't want 50 of them, one out at each well. You want uh, maybe two plants and a, and a well-trained staff running them. You'll want to optimize uh, every part of the running of that plant so that you can keep the uh, waste brine to a minimum. It's going to be, uh, it'll be, it'll characterize the water supply in Goodyear at build down is, is treating brackish groundwater. But the plan is built around that. We've, 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 we've planned and built this system to do that and then yield the multiple benefits. Do the job once and then have an excellent reclaim supply, have an excellent recharge supply and eventually um, those aquifers will clean up and uh, if properly designed recharge and recovery fields are used uh, maybe by the time build out is, is approaching in fact the benefits are already coming through and we won't be pulling as much salt out of the water because we've cleaned it up if we keep it out. Where, where will we, how do we get rid of the brine that we can't? It's an issue that um, much of the valley will be working on. I anticipate there will be regional, so there already are regional solutions in discussion with Bureau of Rec and, and, and others. Um, but in the interim, what, uh, what's being done are, are just simple, uh, fail-proof uh, evaporation beds. That uh, There's nothing much more sustainable in Arizona than the sun, and it will do the job. So it'll take land and sunshine. Now, as you move further further south in the city, yes, you go down to Sonoran Valley, for example, and down toward uh, Mobile. Mm -hmm. How about the water water quality in that area? Is it affected by the same brackish problem we have up here? There are. Um, there's been extensive studies in the um, along the Waterman Wash there in Rainbow Valley, and there is towards the fringes of that aquifer there are there have been several wells that have come in at marginally potable water quality but given that they are on the shallow fringes of the aquifer um, we were assuming that the vast majority of the water that will be mined and used is uh, going to be as the the rest of the wells look uh, brackish now all the way down to um, mobile area in the Sonoran Valley, which we did not include in this master plan, um, I, I do not know. I can't answer that question. Um, but our goal is, the system we've set up here is to uh, eventually improve all the water quality. Just to, just to answer the question, the water quality that we've received so far in Sonoran Valley looks very good. It doesn't look like we'll need to use reverse osmosis at this point. So it's encouraging the data delay. So that could be a very good source for the future yes. study. Yes. And the developers actually brought uh, water resource credits necessary to meet their obligations. So we've got the physical availability and we've got the legal availability of 
some what appears to be some very good quality groundwater. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on. Again, there's that slide showing that um, the bar across the top is the amount of reclaimed water that would be made over the course of the year, steady basis. And the, the green area there shows the typical growth in demand as we run through uh, from winter to, to summer peak demands and back to winter. And the balance is going to simply be recharged so that uh, the city's resources benefit from 100% of the uh, reclaimed water that's produced. Uh, we developed a reclaimed water infrastructure plan. This is the third integrated system here. Uh, it picks up where the uh, reclamation plants, where the wastewater comes in and is reclaimed and then it's pumped back out again through another distribution system. Uh, the banded areas that you see down there to the south are the, uh, the proposed recharge fields. And uh, the goal is to get it into the ground and in that central zone is uh, likely to be um, water recovery. And, you know, in simple terms, it, it's, it's likely to be somewhere where the potable water comes from. Uh, California has standards uh, for if you're injecting reclaimed water into an aquifer, uh, uh, what's the minimum distance before you might find a potable water well. Arizona does not have a specific distance standard. They have quality requirements, and we designed it to meet the quality requirements and to go one step farther to uh, utilize a standard that our neighbors to the west have in terms of distance separation. So we have a plan that allows for potable wells to be put unquestionably safely separated from recharge wells. And this is a practice, though, that uh, you know, you, if you find it surprising, you need to know that it's going on uh, all over the uh, Maricopa County, all over the Salt River Valley. There's water, reclaimed water being recharged and there's potable water being pulled out. So same thing, just in a very uh, coordinated and efficient fashion. And that's how we believe we can clean that aquifer up over time. The, um, we'll get into the last little bit here. The uh, not only do you have to have enough groundwater and surface water to meet your demands, but the Arizona Code requires that um, for every acre foot that you pump out of the ground, that you recharge an acre foot. Um, and that uh, this is what it looks like uh, today. Um, that uh, 8,000 acre feet of pumping is entirely uh, groundwater, including the, the brine portion on top. And the recharge credits that cover that are uh, about half of them are coming from um, recharge of reclaimed water and the other half today are coming from um, the unused portion of your Central Arizona project water and that earns uh, uh, enough credits to put the city in a sustainable safe yield basis. As you move forward towards build out it's going to get a little bit harder to do that given the quantity of groundwater being pumped and the uh, the, uh, with only 50% of it coming back as reclaimed water, um, it gets a little harder to keep up. So, um, one of the, uh, there's again sufficient water at build out to meet demand, but the challenge will be in, in getting the groundwater replenishment obligation taken care of. And so we've, uh, we've included in the master plan a, uh, it's about a five fold strategy that, um, each one of these strategies uh, uh, doing its part can close the gap and um, those strategies are it gives a it gives a plan to work towards this is what um, your uh, conservation staff and your water resources staff will be working towards as the city moves forward um, we can simply uh, the city could purchase additional credits or pay the Central Arizona Groundwater Replenishment District, a tax to accomplish the recharge for the city. Um, the city is currently a member of the CAGRD um, and that mechanism will help to close the gap. Uh, if additional surface resources become available through either leasing of uh, water from the Indian Nations or future reallocations of the CAP, that will um, close the gap. 
um, if the city implements a uh, conservation goals and uh, looks hard at um, at uh, perhaps ordinances limiting or restricting outdoor landscaping, uh, water that's that is not sent to outdoor landscaping will help close the gap because that water doesn't come back as reclaimed as wastewater that can be reclaimed. It's gone. It's evaporated. So. Uh, exterior water use conservation will help. Um, improving the uh, reverse osmosis, the recovery process, less brine, more recovered water, cleaning up the aquifer under this program will help uh, accomplish that. And um, finally, recognizing that um, the reclaimed water has value as a recharge product. It has a, it has a need and so we would say um, where there's golf courses, where there's large parks, use reclaim for that, but do not encourage the wholesale giveaway of your reclaimed water. It's a valuable resource um, to use for those applications, but it's valuable as a recharge to help the city achieve and maintain sustainability that the ADWR requires. Finally, we put together all this infrastructure, we balance the resources, and um, Sean wants us to develop costs so that uh, his department uh, can put together budgets. And so we took all the quantities that uh, pipes, pumps, reservoirs, treatment plants quantified by this plan. We, um, we developed accurate unit costs. We believe we have a good feel on how much uh, cost to build a million gallons of storage or an MGD of treatment these days in the valley. Multiplied it out and we phased it. Uh, a year-by-year -year plan from 2008 to 2012, uh, a 2017 interim budget, and then a uh, build-out total. And um, as um, Mr. Bradford had said, um, should the growth rates we used be uh, a little bit aggressive, um, the uh, spending, the, the CIP is tied to levels of development. It's not tied to years. And so if you're not reaching those development milestones in terms of number of houses as quickly, just stretch it out. The costs go with the need, not with the year. Um, and those two are adjustable. The final steps um, with a completed plan is to uh, work towards implementing the sustainability uh, strategy that uh, master plans are updated uh, typically about every five years. Uh, if a city's doing, doing the job well, it'll be about every four, five, six years. So this is going to be updated a number of times between now and build out. And, um, and the effects of acquiring other resources or, or achieving <laughs> conservation can be integrated into this and it'd be like a checkup every few years to see how it's going. Um, the city needs to take these numbers and, and uh, present them to ADWR and, and update their shared water supply designation. Uh, very vital to uh, the health and, 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 and uh, of the community to have that assured water supply designation. Um, the well fields that we've laid out need to now get down to more of the well by well uh, sizing and locating and planning to make sure it works efficiently. And, um, and, I, and the city will need to keep a finger on the pulse of what's being done for regional brine disposal uh, because it's, Goodyear is not the only city that, uh, that this will become a very important issue to. Um, and with that, yes, I'm done. I hope I didn't take too long. Very good. You didn't really touch on this, and it may be because it's beyond the scope of what uh, you're supposed to be working on, but um, with our Superfund site mm -hmm. and the plumes that we have, mm -hmm. or I hate to be negative, maybe future plumes that mm -hmm. could, you know, be out there. Um, you're when you kind of hit on it, the well sites. If we were to have wells that became um, unusable, mm -hmm. do we have a strategy as to what we're going to do for water in those areas? Right. That is, um, you know, the one of the, the second to the last bullet there was begin the well field design, and um, we have um, we have our kind of generalized concept of where we think these well fields go and how they might work in 
the areas north of the Gila River, we show the water that's being pumped from the uh, Salt River Valley over towards the western half of the city, away from where the, the Superfund, the TCE contamination is by the Goodyear Airport. Um, that's not hard and fast. Um, those plumes, you can get closer to that and still uh, be pumping water that would be used for potable purposes. Uh, but we anticipate that the, um, the detailed design based off of detailed hydrogeologic modeling can, um, can better site the exact pumping areas, but it, it's, a, it's a job that needs to be done. And yes, uh, things pop up all the time. Areas uh, can be worked around. Some of the contaminants that are found, and there are cities that pump uh, TCE contaminated water and uh, strip it and, and carbon polish it and drink it. Um, we're not showing that as the case here, but, but you know, there's nitrates, there's arsenic. Uh, Mother Nature throws many things at us that we take out, and, and our uh, industrial and agricultural activities have, we've, we've, we've made our job very interesting under almost everywhere you go in the Phoenix Valley. So people are working with that all the time. We'll try to find the easiest job, though, to produce the 70-some million gallons per day that'll come out of the ground. I just wanted to know that it was part of the strategy of... Yes, it is. It is, and it needs to be refined with the next, um, the next steps. The next steps. It, uh, beyond a, a conceptual plan level down to implementable well sites. Thank you. Uh, you know, yes. This isn't really a question, it's more of a statement, but it hasn't been too long ago when we saw um, a notice in the paper that, I think it was the Prescott Valley, you have to kind of help me here a little bit, Sean, uh, was trying to sell their reclaimed water because they had so much of it and they couldn't <laughs> use it. I don't know if you saw that or not. Of course, you know, I'm like right on it. And uh, Sean and I talked about it, and of course, it wasn't at a point where we were interested in purchasing any of it. Mm -hmm. But you talked about there might come a point where we have so much reclaimed water, and where are we going to, what are we going to do with this? Mm -hmm. Will we ever come to the point where we maybe want to sell this? And Sean says no. So no, that's you, the answer. you know, what we've shown is that there's probably a shortage that you could use more, and that you might be buying some other city's excess reclaimed water to, to uh, achieve the credits for that, to, so that you can show that you've, you've sure. earned as much okay. recharge credit as you've pumped in groundwater. And uh, just a little aside to that, mm -hmm. um, they did not get any takers. Mm. And I, that surprised me because there are a lot of cities that talk about having the water shortage. And, right. and here it was being offered. Reclaimed water yeah. usually gets put into the ground. Um, and and if you're not in the what they call the active management area, if you're not in that groundwater basin, it's not as much valuable. There's not as much value to someone in Phoenix, in the Phoenix AMA or the right, Phoenix the basin, yeah. uh, reclaimed water that's available up there. But um, yeah, the, they'll be takers for Prescott Valley. Mm -hmm. Yep. My question would be for Sean more more than for you. John, I, I don't know how many uh, soft water systems we have, individual soft water systems we have in the city itself, uh, but the majority of them uh, naturally are using salt for recharging, and of course recharging puts the salt back in, into our systems. Uh, there is a lot of ad advertising going on today on TV, and I've had some several questions from people relative to this new system that they don't. Uh, I'd like uh, maybe you to, or a member of your staff, to maybe research that and see what the difference is and what they say you, you, it doesn't use salt. So uh, maybe it's beneficial to us. Or if it's not a gimmick, let's find out what it is. Yeah, there was a press release on a regenerative technology where they regenerate the media and they don't discharge the brine into the sewer system. Uh, on the 5th of May, we're coming back with another work session item on our conservation plan, and we'll talk a little bit more about water softness. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. And it was mentioned in your In Focus. Yes, it was. Yes. That was my article this week about using potassium instead of salt to try to help that brine issue. Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, no, no, no. I don't know which, which, one of this, which one of you will answer this question, but I'm going to go back to the evening when we talked about the finances prior to making the baseball decision. And what I heard was a very <clears throat> aggressive move away from RO, but what I heard this evening was two or three large RO plants. Help, Sean, help me 
I'm grappling with that as I heard the presentation tonight. What we're trying to accomplish is we want to bring in what we call the next bucket of water. We want to bring in the lower cost waters for the next phase, which would be the Adam and Mutual Water Company and our surface water. Right. That's about 25 million gallons a day. And if you look, remember back, we were about a 100 million gallon per day system, so that's <laughs> roughly 25 percent of our supply full build out. That's our initial fo focus here for the next 10 or 15 years is to bring that supplies those supplies online. Our hope is when we get to the po point where we have to bring in large amounts of uh, brackish water, where we have to look at drilling large water campuses in, in Australia or f even further south, that there's opportunities and other supplies have been made available, regional s solutions. I know CAP is starting to look at and they're starting to contemplate large, potentially large regional desalination plants where you would just buy potable water from them and you wouldn't necessarily be, be have to deal with the disposal of the brine. So what we're trying to do is allow technology to catch up to a problem um, by deferring, putting that infrastructure into the ground and bringing in this, this cheaper water as our next phase. But if we had to stay here today and develop all of our sources, we would need to put on reverse osmosis in the next 20 to 50 years. But we're trying to defer that as far out as we can so that there's a regional solution to the problem. The so the financial pressure still exists with the RO about five dollars and change per gallon versus or per thousand. The, the, depending versus, on the yeah, depending on the buck and a half per thousand. Exactly, Vice Mayor. Depending on the quality, uh, you can blend by the, the the reverse osmosis we use now at at the Bullard Water Campus is about a dollar seventy a thousand because we're able to blend a lot of that water by. We have multiple sources of supply converging onto that facility. Uh, but if you had very poor quality water and you were to treat it with 100% reverse osmosis, it becomes very expensive. So we want to defer those costs as long as we can. When we talk about buying water credits from other municipalities or other areas, we're talking paper water. We're not talking real water within our area. So we still have the costs associated. And the costs could get, it's great to put a drop in for a drop we take out, but we still are going to have O&M issues associated with more brackish water if we're not recharging enough, right? I mean, yes. It's going to continue to get more. Po poor quality water will degrade over time, will be more costly to treat, and then there's a replenishment obligation that will become more and more expensive. So that's why we're focusing our efforts in the near term on surface water, acquiring additional surface water rights. I mean, this plan is, again, based in 2007 data. It's our hope that we can come up with larger solutions, surface water supplies, and that'll just defer our port, uh, we'll change our portfolio and allow us to develop less groundwater, less costly groundwater. One more question on the uh, Gila River. There's been water, pretty good flow of water coming down that Gila River and has been since about the 1st of November. And it's still, it's way down, but it's still coming through. I understand what's coming through now <coughs> isn't from the Salt River, but it's from the uh, aquifer, or from the uh, 91st, 91st uh, uh, station. 91st Avenue. Uh, is that water not available, or is it any good, or it, it's not our water? Can We can't uh, use any of that. Is that correct? No, it's of, it's of a poorer quality if you wanted to try to treat it to a potable standard. Because it's effluent, you need to change the physical characteristic. I don't want to get overly technical, but you have to recharge it into the ground and then pull it out. You can't take effluent off the tailpipe of a wastewater treatment plant and treat it and, and produce it as drinking water. You have to get it back into the ground, change it, its characteristics and then pull it out as groundwater. But it's poor quality. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Budget? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm pleased to be here tonight to present the fiscal year 2009 budget. Um, with that, I'm going to cover a couple different things tonight. I'm going to talk a little bit about the budget process as it uh, moved through this year. It was quite different than prior years. Also, about current year trends that we've been discussing all along since um, some of the work sessions over the uh, months of February and March. I'm going to give you a budget overview of the uh, entire budget and then touch a little bit on some of the major operating funds and finally close up with the budget initiatives that were discussed at the uh, council advance.
Um, starting here, we picked up at mid-year in November and did an initial um, financial review, which included an assessment of the revenue. At that time, I think you're all aware that the revenue projections had been decreasing and we were um, projecting less revenue for the budget year. We've also moved through a number of work sessions that discussed, again, the revenue uh, situation and the decline in the revenue, as well as the capital plan, um, the fund balance and scheduling. We had some meetings going into March that discussed key issues of the budget. And uh, finally, that all um, culminated with the council advance, which was at the end of March. Uh, where we're at today is, again, the um, proposed budget for fiscal year 09. Moving forward, we have some legal requirements that uh, I'll go ahead and point out the key dates for those. We will be planning to adopt the tentative budget on May 19th, moving forward into June on the 23rd, the final budget adoption, and then um, following up with the property tax adoption on uh, July 14th. The dates um, do have statutory requirements, and so it's important that we kind of stick to that, that final schedule of the tentative, final, and then before the council leaves on break that we go ahead and do the property tax adoption. Okay, while that was all going on up here in the forefront, the departments were doing a lot of work to um, go ahead and prepare their budgets for this year. Again, with the revenue, um, decreases and just the slowdown in the economy, it, the budget process kind of uh, took a little different twist this year. I'm going to try and take a minute to explain how how it worked as far as the internal um, budget process went in the city. We actually had the departments go ahead and review their base budgets, which was essentially their budget from the prior year, less any one-time or um, one-time operating supplements. I think you're familiar with those. We usually put together supplemental packages and bring those forward. And the idea was to uh, reduce the base budget or to keep it level, if you will. Um, after that, we had a couple, uh, two different meetings with each of the departments, and we did line on a review, and we went through a lot of scrutiny. And we actually looked back at historical uh, expenditure trending and determined where departments perhaps had um, savings in their line items and then work with the departments to come up with, uh, ask each of them to come up with a target reduction of 5 to 9 percent to balance available ongoing operations with available ongoing revenues. Uh, again, the budget put forward today um, does include those decreases, and I want to thank the department heads that are here. They did a great job working with us to achieve those reductions. And the budgets moving forward is the new base budget um, and does not include any one-time or equipment purchases. The uh, budget book before you is actually a result of all that work. The reason I forgot to say the, a copy of the presentation is on the inside cover of the book. The books uh, simply contain a budget summary, which lists all the departments and a couple categories um, of expenditures. There's also a section in the middle, which is every department summary. Um, it includes their uh, goals and accomplishments, as well as their um, objectives for the next year and their divisional budget detail. And finally, in the back, you'll find some budget schedules that are uh, simply um, detailed schedules that support the graphs that I'm going to use, namely the revenue, operating revenue, um, operating expenditures, and a debt service schedule. With that, I'm going to go into a little bit of the current financial situation. Again, it's kind of a review. Larry was up here a few times um, over the spring. Uh, giving details on uh, the revenue projections and what, what we're expecting and what we're seeing for this year. And what I'd just like to point out here is out of the general fund revenues, um, the budget this year totaled $86 million. It is a large portion of the revenue for the entire city. We were projecting a uh, decrease in revenues of nearly $11.6 million, pretty substantial. The um, majority of it comes from uh, sales tax, which of course is related a lot to uh, retail sales and also construction sales tax. On the expenditure side of this equation, um, given that news, it was not was not so great. Uh, again, we went back. Um, city manager <laughs> offered up a, a directive at um, I think it was one of the meetings back in February and issued a memo, put some uh, measures in place that would help to slow down the spending 
and perhaps uh, result in some savings this year so we could again meet the budget with the uh, decline in revenues. And so what we, what we were seeing city-wise is, is an uh, estimated budget at the beginning of the year of 79. With all these measures put in place, we we're estimating a $9 million savings overall. One of the, uh, again, larger sources of revenue for the city is sales tax. And what I wanted to indicate here is you can see we've patterned over the last five or six years um, pretty steady growth. And uh, you can see on the left-hand side was the budgeted amount, the green bar, the uh, yellow bar represented actuals. Um, nearly all the time the actuals came in higher than the budget. Of course, this ended up the opposite this year. So again, I just want to point out the downturn in the trend. And then uh, another you know, large part of our uh, revenue source here comes from uh, construction, single family housing. Not only does it, um, you know, the sales tax, construction sales tax is dependent on this, uh, so are the building fees such as uh, engineering fees, permit fees, anything related to development. Um, once again, I just want to show that the uh, trend here is decreasing. I don't think it's any surprise. Okay, moving ahead now to fiscal year 09, the total budget is projected to be uh, approximately 170 million. Of that um, revenue, again, the, the largest portion is uh, comes from your taxes, which is your property tax, your sales tax, uh, again, uh, engineering related fees and permit charges. Um, bonds will represent 24% of the revenue this year. We are still a growing community investing in our capital improvement program. 11% uh, will come from user fees, which is primarily your water and wastewater um, customers. And on the uh, summary of use side, we are estimating that the total budget will be approximately $170 million. Um, Worthy to note here, the operating represents 52% of the budget. Uh, we do have the second spring training facility um, in this budget at $33 million worth of project cost. And the capital improvement uh, at 18%, which uh, I think you have a presentation coming up in a couple weeks on the detail of that plan. Um, now moving ahead, I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the other operating funds just to kind of give you an indication of the uh, the types of things that are in these funds and then also the uh, amounts of the budget. Very quickly, uh, water is uh, estimated to be at $23 million for both revenue and expenditures of the revenue. 46% of that comes from years of fees, which again is your customer base. 11% um, for development fees. And again, growing community, 36% is uh, will be bond, um, bond fees this year. On the expenditure side, the water fund, um, it includes all aspects of water, which a lot of it, Sean's group just talked about, what it would be production, distribution, administration, um, conservation, uh, mainly in the production, the larger expenditures you're going to see are for um, electrical and chemicals. Moving ahead to wastewater, the total expected revenue expenditures for this fund are going to be approximately $11 million this year. Um, un, or, you know, just like water, the user fees represent a large portion of the revenue at 71%. Uh, this also includes, there is a uh, secondary property tax transfer in to support some debt service on the wastewater side. On the expenditure side, this is basically all the uh, cost to Great, the water reclamation facilities, collections, um, and there's also a portion of this budget for expenditures that supports water administration. Again, uh, operations represents 41% of the expenditures. <coughs> the sanitation fund, the uh, revenue and expenditures this year are estimated at $5 million. Um, the sole source of revenue coming into sanitation is user fees and that's again all from the customers there are no other um, fees that they earn on the expenditure side conversely the uh, the contractual services represent 78 percent of the budget and that primarily is the contract with waste management that we pay out for collection services 
What are commodities? What? Supplies. Material supplies. All right. On the uh, street fund, or better known as her fund, the um, revenue from her uh, represents 62% of this total $6 million revenue. Again, there's a transfer in from the general fund, and the uh, part of this transfer is to guarantee a, a maintenance of service level, which was agreed to, I think it's back in the 80s, and so we have to contribute from general fund. Um, it's, it's not only, most cities in the valley have a contribution to the uh, streets fund for to maintain the service level. If I didn't say that great. The, on the expenditure side, uh, contract services represents 44%. Some of the key items there would be the pavement maintenance system. The uh, street preservation represents about 1.4 million. Um, electrical street lighting is another uh, 900,000. This chart uh, represents the increases that we've had in the operating budget. We actually averaged about 24% over the last, each year for the last, you know, three, four years. You'll notice that um, we're maintaining pretty much at right around 80 million this year, and that is due to the decline in revenues. This chart represents the operating expenditures for um, all the departments. Noteworthy here is public safety represents about 30% if you had fire and police together, and it's about $23 million. The public works budget represents about 25%, uh, $21 million. It does include a number of divisions, administration, streets, parks, facilities, sanitation, and stadium. And here is the list of budget initiatives. This is not new. A number of these items, I think almost all uh, were discussed at length at the um, Council of Advance. Um, stadium operations will bring on seven new positions. There are a number of personnel-related increases we've incorporated in the budget. Also includes a position for IT security administrator. Uh, working, the departments all work together to come up with six um, they offset six current positions, which will be authorized and remain authorized. However, we will not fund, and we will shift that funding to six additional police staff positions. Uh, matrix recommendations, and um, I think the latest add to the list are the court, um, the court improvements in the um, ongoing lease for that building. I'm good. And uh, finally, here are the uh, tax rate changes again. Um, these were discussed at the council advance. A um, couple changes to the city sales tax code. And then uh, the rate study, the utility rate study, is um, ongoing right now. And there will be um, anticipated increases for both water and wastewater. On the solid waste uh, fund, we will be holding or conducting a comprehensive user fee study during the fiscal year 09 that would have. Uh, potentially have rate impacts once that study is done. You need to... Uh, i got to ask a question yeah. on this one. I, I, don't, I don't recall. I mean, I know I've been out of pocket for a few weeks. Well, Everybody knows I've been I have. here every week. It hasn't been. But when did we discuss 1% change in a retail sales item over $5,000 at the advance? Or... Single Go item ahead. over five. I mean, we've, we've given retailers that have big ticket items. That's going to be Not retailers, but... That's been I gone. Been yeah, using, that's been gone. Yeah, because you. Okay. It's been gone for a couple of years. Uh, no, that is a proposal. It has not been discussed at this, and I apologize. It's quick. It has not been discussed at your level, and will be brought back to you at May nineteenth for discussion. Uh, you have not discussed that. The hotel tax was discussed in the advance. How much revenue difference are we talking about? Uh, the estimate I was given on that number was approximately $500,000. But that still leaves the council discretion on that at that discussion in on May 19th is when we plan on having that before the city council. Uh, 
You're a retailer. I'm, you I'm, say you're I'm not using it. I'm curious. I've been going, I, I took that away over a year ago. I was given letters from the city that I could not do that any longer. It's for individual purchases, but beyond that, best of my knowledge, it's still in the code. I will have our sales tax auditor yeah, yeah. look and we, need to talk. <laughs> and, and we can talk about that. Is this like that auto tax? Is that what this is? That would be automobiles would be large ticket items. Any individual purchase in excess of $5,000. This was established, right. in, <laughs> as I understand it, in the mid-90s. Uh, to attract auto, yeah, so, auto so we used to reduce it to from two to what? From one point two, it's it's two cents for the first five thousand. It drops to one point two percent after five thousand dollars. The proposal would be two percent remaining at two percent above five thousand. Yes. So in other words, it'd be two percent for any retail item in the city of Goodyear, regardless of its price. That's correct. Be cognizant of the development agreements we've put in place based on that, and That's the changes that that makes systematically to future economic development. I just, I anyway. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you popped it on there. You're going to oh, get a reaction. That's a fair a question, reaction. and I appreciate the comments, but it will be coming before. You said proposed. It is proposed. Yeah, it's proposed. Yes. Yeah, I just was the first time I had seen it. So, so it's it's plus point eight percent, correct? That's correct. Not yet. 1%. Yeah. Oh, that's correct. Point 0.8. We, we need to correct that chart. Yes, it is point 0.8 or 8 tenths of a percent is correct. Is gone through Yates and Ford? They are just getting this information also, and they're aware that you're just receiving this information. Um, okay, we'll talk about this because I'm, I'm at a loss right now because it used to be 2500 We had right. And then, right. and then it changed to five thousand, mm -hmm. right. and I've been going by that for the last year to two years, and now we're talking about another change. Okay, we'll go on. We'll go on. I'll, I'll discuss. No, I'm with, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm totally my memory confused. is I remember. <laughs> I've been changing I've been doing this to my customers for at least the past year and a half, so I'm. Well, confused. this is just proposed. <laughs> the five thousand dollar limit is what the code is today. So what are we talking uh, about? For sales oh. above five thousand dollars, the rate is one point two percent today. Okay. So the proposal, if approved by this group, would be to increase that 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 limit is two or that that rate is two percent regardless of the size. That's what that would be doing. So it would remove no that five thousand dollar cap. There'd be no exception. Everything that's no correct. If it's a penny or a hundred thousand dollars, it's two percent. That is correct. Okay. We'll get a chance to talk about it. Yeah, because I didn't see it before. We all can move ahead. I was doing so good. We didn't wait. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you have. And the other thing I'd like to add is that um, we did do a number of work sessions. A lot of the information has been provided um, before. But we would like to offer up, if you would like an additional work session, we can come back and, and answer any questions you have or do further budget presentations. Or the other option would be if anyone wanted to have an individual um, meeting, you could schedule that with me or Larry or the budget staff, and we'd be happy to go over the budget in more detail. Okay. Any questions or comments? I guess you want us to review this and be ready at the May meeting, is that correct? Correct. It'll be the tentative adoption. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, why don't we meet at 6.15? 6.15, we'll start our council meeting. This meeting is adjourned.